What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the first episode in our coverage of Jalopy, A Grand Journey East. This is kind of an interesting little game because in some ways it's like a roguelike, but in other ways it's sort of just an exploration, keep your car running, FTL type game. It's very, very odd. It's a strange little game and I watched other people play it and I was really on the fence about it because it seemed like the early access was very, very primitive. It looked like it was buggy and it looked like it was going to have issues. But you know what? Nonetheless, I kind of want to play the game, so I wanted to invite you all over to play Jalopy, A Grand Journey East with me. If you want to know the setting of the game, you're in, I think, you start out driving, I think, through eastern Germany or something like that. I don't recall. You're kind of like in the Soviet Union and the, like, I think the, the Berlin Wall has just fallen, and so you're kind of going somewhere, and I'm not really entirely sure why or to what extent, but you can sneak contraband across borders in your car, and basically it's the story of you and your beater-ass scraper of a car. So anyways, let's hop in the bucket and get this thing started. Yes, I would love to continue. Wake up. Wake up! Ah, you're awake finally. Uh, stay in bed any longer and the day will make fools of us both. Come now, I have something important to show you. Come, come, it's just outside. Why is your jacket like ethereal and like clipping into another universe? Holy shit. How much does a jacket like that cost? Do you have shoes on right now or are those just socks? Apparently we're going traveling in our socks. That's okay. I like sock hops. I also enjoy wearing socks, so it seems like I've got the majority of the stipulations required in order to enjoy that sort of thing. Our car is on cinder blocks, Granddad. I don't know if you noticed or not. This here is a Leica 601 Deluxe. Something of an engineering legend in the GDR. 0 to 60 kilometers per hour in 22.5 seconds, a top speed of 100 kilometers per hour, all at the economical rate of 9 kilometers per liter. That is, if we can get her running. Not to worry, I've got everything ready. We'll just need to build her an engine, slap on some wheels, fit the passenger side door, and give her a bit of a clean. So what you're saying is we need to install an entire car. Right now this is a husk, and we're going to be building a car today. So let's get started. Fit the replacement door. It's over on top of that scrap pile behind you. If you squint, you should be able to see it. Ah, yes. Why are we... We're at the Leica factory and they sold this thing to us? Is this how they come off of the line? Oh my god. This is concerning. This is very, very concerning. I don't think you want a car to come off the line like this. I would pay you zero dollars for this. In fact, you would have to pay me to take this off your hand, because I'm taking it to a salvage yard the second I get it off. <laughs> I gotta get a tow truck. I gotta load this thing up. I'm gonna charge you at least that. Mm, I don't trust this. And of course, the door doesn't even match the color of the car. Damn it. All right, let's take the red door back on over here. Apparently, we're gonna be like a weird mint cranberry hybrid on this trip. Less than elegant, or less than elegant, but it's on. Right now, let's fit the engine. If you open the driver's side door, you'll see a black latch. Pull that and it will release the bonnet. Okay, so we're gonna click on the door here. I'm assuming that's it right there. Can you see it? It's a black latch. It should be just under the steering wheel. Yeah, there it is right there. That's it, now you've got it. Okay, now open the bonnet and I can walk you through this. As you can see, she needs an engine. We've got a load of stock parts sat in the garage, so go collect one and I'll walk you through what it does. This does, it looks more like a frunk right now than it does an actual engine housing, but whatever. I'm going to stick with you, Granddad, because I trust in you and your shepherd's hat. That's going to open up. we got some parts in here. The parts are sat in the garage. Go collect one and we can start building the engine. I'm going to collect as many as I can. I think you can pick up like three at a time. So we might be able to do this more rapidly if I do it this way. That's the carburetor. It controls the fuel consumption of the car, which in turn controls how many kilometers per liter you'll get out of your Leica. A good, well-maintained carburetor will mean that you use less fuel and can drive further for cheaper. Go ahead and drop it into the engine. This is a carburetor. If you need one for a truck, it would be a truck berator. If you needed one for, like, a train, I would assume it would be a train berator. For right now, let's go ahead and put it in. The carburetor, I think, mixes oxygen and fuel together in order to control the mix of... I think that's how it works anyways. I don't know. It mixes something. That's the water tank, which provides water to help keep your windscreen clean from dirt. Keep it in good condition or it'll start to leak water and you'll soon find yourself driving without any vision. Go ahead and drop it on in. It goes right there. Once you're... Okay, now you're holding the air filter, which is a non-essential component. The air filter isn't necessarily required to run your Leica, but it's a good idea to have one as it will reduce the rate of wear to your engine block. Go ahead and drop it into the engine. Okay, so we'll put it in there. I think we got to put the engine in first, though, before the air filter goes over the top. I... Eh, whatever. We'll keep gathering stuff. I'm trying to be out of here with a quickness. 
We've got a battery right here. What is that, like a spark plug? An ignition coil. Okay, so a stock engine right there. That looks good. Wow, our guy is pretty mighty if he can carry all this stuff over here. That's the battery, which provides the electrical charge for your Leica. The battery allows you to use the lights, the radio, the car ignition, those sorts of things. If your Leica won't start, the first place to check is the battery. Go ahead and drop it into the engine. Alright. That little thing is called the ignition coil. The ignition coil channels an electrical charge to start the engine. An ignition coil that's in bad condition may struggle to start the engine. Go ahead and drop it on in. Looks like everything in here is held on with zip ties, bubble gum, and maybe like... A couple of bungees. God, that's the engine block you've got there, the core of the Leica setup. The engine block defines core performance of your Leica, including top speed and acceleration. A poorly kept engine block will mean your Leica will struggle to perform. Go ahead and drop it on into the engine. Alright, so there it is. It's starting to look like an actual car. This only took a little bit of time. In real life, this installation would take forever. And then we got a fuel tank over here. We've also got what looks like a toolbox and a water bucket. Let me drop that. I think I could put these in the back of the car for later. I've played a little bit, but not a lot. I think I could put that in there and that in there so we can wash the car and then we can also repair parts once things start falling apart on the road because after all this is a roguelike. We're trying to go as far as we can with as little as possible. A big lump of metal is the fuel tank which holds the fuel of your Leica. A few notes on this one. First of all it's gravity fed so you'll need to open the bonnet and fill directly to the tank when refueling. Also your Leica is running a two stroke engine. This means you'll want to mix in some oil to the fuel mixture. Failure to mix oil into the fuel will mean the engine won't be lubricated and it will wear at an increased rate. Too much oil though and you'll start to see performance drop. Keep your fuel tank well maintained, don't let it get too beaten up or it'll start leaking fuel everywhere. Go ahead and drop it on in. I think it goes right here. Okay, that's everything installed, good job. Now to fill her up, we're getting nowhere without fuel. There should be a can of fuel, a bottle of water, and a bottle of two-strike oil somewhere in the garage. Go and collect them and fill it on up. Yeah, I know I need to fill this on up. So we've got, ah, there we go, the fluids cabinet. We've got water, we've got oil, all right. So we've got everything that we need right now. Everything has a buy and a sell price because we are gonna have to barter for it. Good, that's a can of fuel you're holding right there. If you use that on the fuel cap, the fuel tank we just installed, then you'll begin filling the car with fuel. And there it is, we'll vomit some fuel in there. Perfect, got a full tank. We'll drop that when we're done. We've got a bottle of water. We need to put that into the water tank. There it is. Perfect. Go ahead and drop that if you're done with it. And then we've got a bottle of two-strike oil in our hands. Yeah, you'll want to add a drop to infuse the fuel mixture, which affects things like performance and engine wear. A lean mixture will result in a faster car, but with increased wear to the engine, a rich mix will result in the opposite. Try using it on the fuel tank to affect the fuel mixture. Sure. Lean. Go ahead and drop it if you're done. I am not done with it right now. I actually wanted to go with the... I want to go to spec. That means we don't have a fuel pump inside of here, so most modern gas tanks have a thing called a fuel pump in there which means that it pumps the fuel out of the gas tank and it just makes things easier it also has the increased additive effect of having another thing that can fail inside of your car and normally the fuel pump depending on the build the fuel pump and the gas meter in your car will be linked into the same thing because it's got like a little pressure weight inside of it or something like that and so if your fuel if your fuel pump isn't working chances are you may not be able to use your gas meter either let's move on to to yours go about getting some to yours on the car so as you can see we won't get very far without wheels there's a car jack over in the garage bring it over and we can get started I'm actually going to put more oil inside of here there we go we've got an optimal oil mix now and then we probably want to keep one of these with us while we're traveling I would think so let's put that in there probably want to bring a gas can with us too just in case. We'll throw that guy in there. Can I put it anywhere else? I mean, chances are I can probably ditch the bucket and just not worry about it. I will need to wash the car for a little bit. So we got the car jack. Let's bring this over. So you can put the car jack on a side like so. Once the car jack's in, we can take it and we can turn the handle and that'll raise the car up. You'll notice you can now use the tire iron, but first we'll need to fit some road tires. Go ahead and drop that. And when you drop the tire iron, it always goes back to the jack. It comes with the jack, so be aware you can't lose your tire iron. It's also great for holding off brigands in case we are ever attacked by random rogues on the road. I'm going to fix that to an axle right there. I'm going to fix this to an axle right there. And then we need the tire iron. Apparently, our wheel is fixed on with one bolt. Never mind the fact that we've got the entire tire assembly here. It's got the wheel, the tire, and everything else. Do the other one for the other region. It worries me that our wheel is fixed on with one bolt. That is way too few points of failure. 
drop the car jack real fast. It'll teleport back over there. We'll grab the other two tires and we'll bring them over to this side. The two wheels anyways. Oh, never mind. I've got to turn that. Okay. We'll pick that up. We'll ditch the other tire on this side. We've got to move this to over here. Twist the handle real fast. Granddad, you're not helping. You're narrating stuff that I already know how to do. Stop. I'm I'm attempting. Yes, drop that right there. Where did the other tire go? There it is. It's on the ground. So let's pick this bad boy up. Tires are expensive, man. Tires are expensive in this world. Put that right there. 50 bucks for a tire. Jesus. Let's hope we don't have to fix new tires on this prick anytime soon. Why won't that go onto there? Uh... Interesting. We may have a problem. We may have a very, very real problem. Yes, we do. We have a very real problem right now. The game has already bugged out on us. Tire stuck in my hand. Shit. Shitty shit shit. Okay. Funsies. This is what I was worried about in covering this title. Early access. Hooray. Hmm. Let me see if I can dislodge this somehow. Oh, man. I was hoping that would work. It did not work. Yeah, sometimes shit gets stuck in your hands. I, I don't make the rules here. Yeah, it's not counting the tire, basically. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, so I got it fixed now. It should be fine. I just had to, like, go back around and redo the tire -y thing. Every now and again, this game is very, very buggy, so be careful if you purchase it, for real. Be ready. You will have game-breaking bugs. Normally, they're hilarious, though, so it's not quite as stingy, but for a YouTube series, it can make it difficult. All right, let's see how she runs. I'll be in the car. You may want to load the trunk with any spares left over in the garage. You can never be sure what you'll need on the road. I don't want to be paranoid, though. I'll probably bring the jack, because we'll probably have to do some tires before anything else. So let's bring the jack. I guess. So we got the jack. I'll bring the toolbox. I probably won't bring the washing fluid. I'm going to try and travel only during the daytime. If you travel when it's, like, rainy and shit, bad things happen. Are these still containing fluids, or, like, how are these doing? This one looks like it still has oil inside of it, so maybe we takes it with us? Yes. Before we get in our like, uh, I think we should probably bring this too. That's probably a good plan, so let's let's have that along for right now. We'll close that on off. We'll close that off. So now we should be good. We're all tired up. We're ready to go. This is the first time I've ever been tired, but ready to go. Let's jump inside the car. Okay, before we set off, let's get you familiar with some companions. We have the maintenance manual. It covers the basics of running a car. This is actually just the game manual, like for real. It's actually written like in theme and everything like that. It's pretty fun. I, I went through it and I looked at it. There's all kinds of random stuff in there that you can play around with, but it is what it is. It actually stays inside the dash console right over there somewhere if you ever need it. Yeah, it's right there. And so we've got a wallet right here too, just in case you want to spend some ducats. Want to spend a little bit of money. We've also got this right here. It's the map, which allows us to travel, and so we're going to select our route today. The important one, as it shows you how to collect switch loot, you're going to be, all right, let's get out of here. The first place we're going is a border crossing zone. I've marked all the potential routes I know of, including weather conditions, and any stop-off points along the route. Go ahead and select one now. You want to travel in the sun if you can help. Ooh, it looks like it's doing a little dance, like, yeah, shimmy and shake. What route you going to take? Shimmy and shake. What route you going to take? Womp, 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 womp. We're going to go with this one right here. The reason being is because it's sunny. You don't want to be in the rain. Once a route has been selected, we're committed to driving on it. And again, you can turn pages by selecting the top corners, and other pages include your statistical tracking and your unlocks. Okay, I don't think i got to worry about unlocking anything aside from the car dough right now. Oh, he wants me to go... Okay, whatever. Granddad, you're making this very complicated. This is a learning experience. Oh my god, your jacket. Your jacket is so crazy. It's like it's moving, but it's still at the same time. Now we can have a look through that later. Let's go ahead and close that for now. It's closed. Finally, the keys. Close the door. There they are. He's going to hand them off to us. We put those in the ignition. And the car starts right up. Apparently, I'm a better mechanic than I thought I was. We drive the car with WASD, as you would expect. Why is somebody shooting at us? We're being fired upon. It gets rough out here in the Eastern Block. And so begins our journey. Head towards Dresden. We'll be traveling the Autobahn for the first part. This should give you a chance to get to grips with the Leica. 
I should hope so. This feel, it feels like a giant iron and steel hulking death trap of a vehicle. I don't like this thing at all. I don't trust anything that I built with my hands. I know how bad I am at building shit. And this just seems like a recipe for heartache. If we eat too much along the road, it'll be a recipe for heartburn, too. While we're on the subject. Fiddle around with stuff in here. I think we can... Oh, man, it's not letting me do it. I can put yours down, though, Granddad. Is that good? We can also turn on the cab lights if we wanted to. All these little buttons and switches and shit do stuff. I don't know exactly what they all do. I don't know if I'm driving properly right now, but you know what? Let's just stay on the road. On the road again. Just can't wait to see tanks on the road again. I hope I don't mess up this roundabout, my friends. Oh, my God, there's other drivers on the road again. Look, Granddad, I'm not looking ahead. I'm driving without sight. It's my superpower. I am an X-Man. He drives without sight. So I'll go through our little journey with you. We're heading towards Dresden so we can cross the border into the Czechoslovak Socialist Republic. No, wait, that's not right. Didn't they change the name recently? What was it? Basically, we're traveling God knows where to do God knows what. This thing's fuel efficiency leaves a lot to be desired. Look at that shit. We're already low on fuel. We've already gone through a quarter tank. We've, dr we've driven like five feet. We don't really have a trip planner, like, up in here, so the dash leaves a little bit to be desired. I mean, we don't even know what our RPMs are right now. Yikes. This car is brutal. This car is definitely a piece of work. At least everybody else on the road has a beat-ass car like ours. Nobody out here shining in the Bugatti making us all feel bad. I think there was a thing on the side of the road back there. Hold up. There was a thing on the side of the road. This thing does not reverse at a good speed. What is this right here? I'm gonna turn off. Turn off for what? Turn off for what? Apparently cardboard boxes. Please do not strike me other motorists. So I think... So if I pick this up, what does this do? That looks like a... What the hell is that? That one's got a lock on it. Oh, you know that's valuable. That's coming with us. Hold on, we're putting this in the vehicle. Yup. Throw it in the back with the rest of our treasures. Oh, you can stack stuff too? Oh, shit. What is that? Oh, my God. Is medicine? Oh, dude, we are balling now. Is it legal to take medicine across the border into Dresden? I'm a little concerned about this, but we're going to do it anyways. I have my concerns. I have my concerns. We might get arrested. Apparently, we've been in the episode for like eight seconds, and I'm a drug runner already. Hooray for drug runnery! Oh my god, there's so many pills in here, too. What is this, like Ativan, Clonopin? What kind of money are we trying to make right now? Oh, uh, we're the neighborhood drug supply now. Yup. Here we go. My life is a drug dealer. Who dat? Who dat? Huh? GG what? <laughs> Alright, so I guess we probably don't need to... Hey, Granddad, don't worry about me. What are you doing out there? Nothing. Just picking up drugs that I found on the side of the road. Alright, let's... Start the... Don't you worry your pretty little head, Granddad. Where did all of these drugs come from? You're old. I'm sure you're gonna need drugs at some point. Let's merge safely. Can we carjack somebody else and take their car? Because our car sucks. I want a better car. If I see a Lambo, we're totally jacking a fool. Put the key up against his neck. But like, alright, give me the motor. Why on earth did they change the name? Man, that thing is definitely not gonna pass smog. Because it's got a rocket engine on the back of it. <laughs> oh no. What have we done? I'm drug running. I'm behind a car that apparently has a flame launcher on the back of it. It's gonna be a rough day for us, I can tell already. Things are gonna go oh so wrong. I wanna pass this guy, but if you hit other cars, they charge you money. Oh yeah, that was it. The Czech and Slovak Federative Republic. 40 years and now a wall falls over, they decide to change the name. The fact they've dropped the socialists from their name doesn't affect our passage. I'm sure it just means border security will be lax. I bet it'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Nobody behind us, sunlight in front of us. It's a good day for a drive, I can tell. 
I hate driving with a keyboard. A tankstella. We can get to the petrol station if we turn off right here. Oh, there it is right there. Okay. It would be a good idea to stop for fuel and also to sell all these drugs. We'd be out in the front like Jay and Silent Bob. Shit! The engine looks like it's in trouble. Stop the car when it's safe to do so. Alright, well it appears as though our beat-ass car is already having issues. Told you we shouldn't drive this thing. They sold us to us in a scrap heap of other cars of the same make and model. That does not instill faith in me. Alright, let's pull up. It's making sputtering noises like cars in old jalopy films from like the 1930s. Let's take a look at the engine. If you pull the latch under the steering wheel, we can take a look. Alright, granddad. I think we're out of time for the day, though. My name is Splattercat. This game is called Jalopy. If you wanted to check it out, we really haven't done much yet. But I promise you, it gets kind of interesting as time goes along. I will see you all in the future. Bye, everybody. Get Jalopy down below.